Hello and welcome to another Econ Elastic video. Hope everyone is well. Um, so our video today is on the relationship between demand and price. Uh, the aim of the video is for you to understand the relationship to, between demand and price. Uh, <laughs> Just to emphasize that point. Yeah. So throughout the demand and supply videos, we will be um, covering, we are gonna have some assumptions for you guys. So one of them, is that markets uh, that we discuss face perfect competition. Now, if everybody doesn't know what perfect competition is, we'd um, say to check out the alternative market structure videos, which is on our YouTube channel. Um, but just as a reminder, uh, this is the market where there are too many consumers and too many producers to have any control over prices. So therefore, everyone is price takers. So the first concept we'll be uh, covering in this video is the law of demand. So this states that when the price of a good rises, the quantity demanded of that good will fall. Fairly straightforward, to be honest, at this point. Um, so we're just going to provide an example for you. So let's relay it to the way we lived our lives. A lot of students probably lived their lives Um you're relying on supermarket meal deals through the week to get your lunch. Um, and let's say the manufacturer of these goods um, just face severe supply chain issues. And that resonates um, with the increase in price of that very same meal deal, the usual sandwich, crisps and a drink, whatever you want to go for, um, has gone from £3 up to £5. How would you respond to this? If you, if you were faced with this decision, how would you respond to that? The likelihood is the majority of people um, will either reduce the number of meal deals that they buy per week, uh, and some actually may not buy them at all because of that price increase. Yeah. So there are two reasons for the law of demand, the income effect and the substitution effect. So going back to Andrew's example with the meal deals, that they have increased by um, from three pounds to five pounds. People can't afford to buy the same amount of meal deals with their money. So for example, if you had 15 pounds uh, and you pre pre previously consumed five meal deals a week, Monday to Friday, then you can, um, you can now only afford three because the price has increased from three to five. So you could only yeah. do Monday to Wednesday. Um, so therefore, the purchasing power, so the real income, so your real income has fallen. This is known as the income effect. Yeah. Again, if the meal deal has increased in price, but for example, Subway sandwiches had uh, remained the same, then the meal deal now costs uh, more than the alternative or substitute good. Therefore, rationally, people would um, switch to these alternative goods. This is the substitution effect. Yeah, so that's the income and substitution effect. Uh, and obviously our examples covered the effect of a price increase of a good. Um, the opposite obviously occurs should the price of a good fall. Um, if the price of a good falls, people can generally buy more of that good, the income effect, uh, and they will generally switch toward consuming that cheaper good, the substitution effect. Um, so in answer to the aim of our video at the start, um, and in the context of perfect competition, which just as a reminder, is it, it provides an ideal framework um, of which to compare real world scenarios. Um, so simply the law of demand dictates that when the price of a good increases, the quantity demanded of that good decreases. As economists, this obviously allows us, um, allows us to identify how consumers react to changes and therefore how best to allocate uh, resources in a scarce world. Yeah. So and, hope you, oh, oh, sorry. Just, just to add to this, there's also a massive assumption that we didn't mention at the start, is that we're also suggesting that your incomes stay the same. Yeah, so, um, yeah. That if your incomes uh, increase in line with the price increases, there's no change in real income. No. Um, so that and, is- And you wouldn't have to substitute um, for Subway, for example. So that's one of the things we're holding constant here as well. Yeah. So we hope you've enjoyed this video. It's just a quick intro into the relationship between price and demand. 
Um, if you do have any questions, leave them in the comment section. We will get around to answering them all. And we hope to see you in the next video. Yeah, thanks for watching.